I'll be honest, back when I reviewed the HTC U12 Plus almost two years ago, I fully expected it to be the last major HTC phone I talked about here on the Android Central channel. HTC's phone business was swirling in the drain, and the U12 Plus itself would launch with show-stopping bugs that effectively made the product DOA. But HTC as a business is still here, and to my surprise, it's still making phones. Today it announced a pair of new handsets for its home market of Taiwan, the Desire 20 Pro, an entry-level mid-ranger that for the purposes of this video I don't really care about, and this, the HTC U20 5G. So what is this phone, and what does it mean for the future of HTC? The name clearly makes it sound like a successor to the U12 Plus, but let's not get too carried away just yet. Externally, the HTC U20 5G is a pretty generic looking 2020 smartphone, with its hole punch display and quad cameras, along with surprising throwback design elements, like a capacitive rear fingerprint scanner and a hefty chin down below. What makes this phone more modern is its spec sheet, Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G, 8GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, 5G connectivity and a gigantic 5000 mAh battery. For a phone brand that was largely considered dead and buried, that's not a bad looking device for just shy of 19,000 NT in Taiwan, that's around 600 US dollars. If you look at it alongside perhaps the LG Velvet or the upcoming Google Pixel 5, it sounds like a fairly competitive device. And speaking of the Pixel 5, it's fun to remember that the people designing this thing would have been working in the very same building as Google's Pixel 5 engineering team. That's the HTC HQ building that it now shares with Google engineers. Not that you should necessarily read anything into that. HTC's less than dignified exit from the high-end phone segment a couple of years ago involved a phone with glitchy virtual buttons and stale software, redeemed by some of the best cameras of its generation. But the selling off of HTC's phone R&D division to Google a couple of years back will surely have affected the company's ability to produce a competitive smartphone camera. There's no mention of the HDR boost feature that made the U12's camera so great. Instead, HTC focuses on the video stabilization capabilities of its new camera, a 48 megapixel shooter, that's likely a Sony IMX586 or similar, that's the sensor used in the OnePlus 7 Pro and many other 2019 flagships. Decent, but not outstanding. And that seems to apply to just about everything this phone does, at least judging by the details revealed today. There's also the question of the software. Even back in 2017, HTC Sense looked absolutely prehistoric compared to the software design of its contemporaries. Little of the U20's software has actually been shown besides the lock screen, which looks exactly like it did three or four years ago. I would also put money on the same tired loadout of first party apps being preloaded on this thing, including core apps untouched from the HTC One M9 and weather animations that date back to the HTC Sensation almost a decade ago. So if you couldn't tell, I'm not exactly optimistic about what HTC might be doing on the software front. So why is HTC even making phones in 2020? Well, it's first worth remembering that the U20 5G is only launching in Taiwan for now, so unless you fancy importing one for a bit of nostalgic fun, it's unlikely you'll be able to get your hands on one anytime soon. However, HTC's CEO, no, HTC's current CEO, Eve Metra, has at least hinted at a wider launch for future HTC phones, saying in a tweet today that the company's re-entry into the smartphone business would be starting in its home market. In previous interviews, the CEO has admitted the company dropped the ball on smartphone innovation, stating the obvious there perhaps, and in comments in the past six months he's also revealed that new phones would be coming, including a 5G model. And look, as a former executive VP at Orange, he certainly has plenty of smartphone industry experience. If you're looking for a big, splashy, dare I say triumphant return for this once great smartphone brand, that's definitely not what we have here with the U20. It looks like a fine phone, but there's nothing exciting about it on the face of things, outside of the smartphone nerd brand value that HTC still holds for some people. Instead, this is HTC dipping its toe back in the smartphone waters, using the resources it still has. Maybe now, with different leadership and humbler ambitions, it could actually carve out a niche market. But in order for that to happen, it needs to avoid the pattern of failures in leadership, in marketing and in engineering that sent it from being one of the world's biggest smartphone brands to a fossil of its former self. So was HTC back from the dead? Well, from the look of this, it was really more of a hibernation than a death. The HTC VR business is still ticking along after all. These are the first high-profile HTC phones in years, and clearly there's some ambition to sell phones overseas again eventually if they catch on. But HTC couldn't sell phones in meaningful numbers even when it had the brand value and engineering clout to make proper flagships. And now it's trying to do that while effectively having to start from scratch with very limited resources. So I guess it's a case of wait and see. Let us know in the comments what you think of this new HTC sort of flagship. Is this the start of a rebirth for the brand or just a waste of time and money? By all means, subscribe, I guess, on the off chance we actually get some hands-on time with this phone. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.